now. Good afternoon. Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard. Um, this session, we are discussing computer fundamentals. I know this is very, very basic stuff. You definitely, you know, some items or some components from the content, but also there are many new uh, items or new content we will discuss. So this is will be beneficial, I hope so, and informative. Please feel free to uh, interrupt me at any time, ask me questions. I'll try to answer your questions. In case you have, you can unmute your mic and ask me, or you can put it um, in the chat so uh, you don't interrupt the recording or whatsoever. So up to you. I'll uh, share my email also with you. So here we go with my email. So this is my email, sam.elgawadi at tfqld.com.au. In case you have some questions, feel free to email me. The session today, we are discussing the following points. There are other points in the um, ICT unit or the part related to ICT. There are other points um, related to networking and um, connectivity over network. Um, if we have time, I don't think we'll have time to discuss uh, network components and uh, networking in general. So we might have another session for discussing the points related to networking. The agenda for this session is uh, displayed in this slide. It's about computer systems, internal components, random access memory, servers, switches, routers, operating systems, hardware, and software. So um, we, we are using computers every day. We have computers with us everywhere. And, and I mean the smartphones, of course, it's a computer. Um, we have computers also in our cars, washing machines, dishwashers, and other components. So computers around us everywhere. We have been using computers for many, many years. Uh, so we know the computers from outside. So it's a good idea and chance to discuss the internal components. So here in this slide, it's, it's a blank one about the computer design. So we will fill the blanks. So here um, we will have like theoretical design of the computer so we can understand how the computer works. So um, here we have uh, a kind of input uh, devices. So we have some input devices. You can uh, think of some examples for input devices. If you, if you wanna share something, what do you think input devices we have for the computers? Some examples. A USB? Yeah, USB. Uh, mm -hmm. USB. Keyboard? Yes, keyboard. Yes. Mouse, yes. Will monitor be one? Um, monitor, will, you, if it's a, a touch screen, if it's a touch screen, it could be input and output, similar to the USB. USB also is input and output. Um, yeah. But let's delete the, the USB from here and we will put it in a different category just to be more accurate. Uh, we can think of a scanner. Yes. What uh, else? Printer. Oh, printer will be in the output. Absolutely. So, um, uh, so let's copy this one. So we have input devices then on the other hand, we'll have output devices. And you mentioned uh, monitor. You mentioned printer. OK. What else? What about speakers? Yes, it 
headsets out like with device. little speakers okay. yeah little speakers big speakers the headsets mm. and in input we can think of mic the microphone the mic you're talking in now so it's an input device as an if headset if orange so the the headset mm. consists of two parts mic and uh headphones so um, uh, speakers or headphones will be um, output because we listen to some output coming from the computer whether it's music someone talking like what I'm talking now and um, uh, we have also the printer for printing different components good so we have input devices yep. on on this hand and on the other hand we have output devices so the input devices will um, well, input some data and information. Uh, uh, to be more accurate, there is a difference between data and information. So um, here, let's say we have this color. I'm just, you know, is that a good color? Maybe light green, a little bit light like that. Yes, let's change the color for this one so we can differentiate. Yeah, I love drawing, but I'm not good at drawing. <laughs> so um, here we we can think of uh, another component inside the computer. This component, and I need to draw uh, an arrow, and this arrow is one direction, like that. So. Okay, so we have the data. We'll go into a component inside the computer and this component is temporary. So temporary storage. And this temporary storage, we call it, we give it a name. Do you have any idea what, what this name could be? Hard drive? Uh, a no. little, yeah, closer, something else. It's temporary storage. The hard drive is permanent storage. So this one, we call it RAM. RAM. Yes. When you buy a computer, it will tell you this computer is eight gig of RAM, eight gigabyte of RAM, which is random access memory. So random access memory, this is the uh, full name of the RAM, which is a memory, temporary memory, and temporary storage for interim data and information. Again, information is a processed data. So data is the raw components or raw, uh, we can call it raw material. <laughs> then we have the processed one, which is the information. Good, from the RAM, we can just copy this arrow and we will have the output goes to the output devices. So we said the RAM is a temporary storage. That's why if you have a bigger RAM, you will have better performance in your computer. If you have eight gig, it's better than four gig. If you have 16 gig, gigabyte of RAM will be better, much better than eight gig and so forth. We can have, my, my, my current computer is uh, 16 gigabyte of data, sorry, of RAM, it's 16 gigabyte of RAM storage. Okay, so the RAM will hold the data temporarily. And as you mentioned, we need a kind of uh, permanent storage, so let's um, insert permanent storage here and give it a different color. And this permanent storage, it's HDD or SSD, which is hard disk drive or solid 
state drive. In old days, we used to use hard disk drives. Nowadays, we are using SSD, which is solid state drive. I'll, um, I'll show you the differences in a moment. So, as you mentioned, we needed a permanent storage. Why we needed a permanent storage? Because we, in the comp computers, when they designed the computers in the beginning, we used to have the temporary storage. And once you switch off your computer or restart your computer, everything will be uh, lost. So we need a permanent storage. And this permanent storage is the hard drive. When you switch off your computer at home or work, next day you switch on, so everything is stored there. Where, where, where is the Windows or the Mac is stored? Where is the data stored? It's on the hard drive. So here with the hard drive, uh, we have uh, two directions because we read and write from the hard drives. Did that make sense? Yeah. So the RAM, well, if we need to save, it will be saved to the hard drive. Next day in the morning, you switch on your computer and you start reading the files. You open Word file, you open Excel, you open your email. It will come from the hard drive and the network. We will discuss the network later. Good, so two, two directions here. Okay. Now, this is the, uh, when, when you look like that, okay, who controls that? We need a controller. We need something that telling the devices, the input devices, we are typing in English or in German. Uh, we need something telling the temporary RAM, keep the data or save the data to hard drive, something telling the hard drive to, um, read or store or delete or update something telling the monitor to display. So we need a kind of a brain. So um, this brain here, this is the brain of the computer and um, what do you think should be the name of this one? What do you think? Computer brain is the processor. So we have the processor. The processor controls everything. So the processor will read some data from RAM and will write some data to the RAM. The processor will control everything. Processor is a hardware component. The RAM is a hardware component. Hardware means tangible. Hardware means tangible component, tangible item. So we have the RAM. Random access memory is a tangible component. We have input devices like keyboard, it's tangible, mouse, scanner, microphone. Uh, output devices, so we are discussing the tangible items here. So the processor is the brain of the computer. Good. Is that is that the monitor? No, the monitor is the display here on the right hand. Ah. Oh. Yeah, display monitor. Okay. Okay. Yep. I guess. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So processor, it's it's called processor, and it's made from. Um, Silicon, that's why they call the, the, uh, the area in the United States Silicon Valley. And it's made of silicon and the silicon made from sand, pure sand, of course. So it's, it's uh, uh, of course, it's complicated uh, design and everything. I'll show you uh, some photos in a moment. So these are the basic components of the computer system. And, uh, um, in, in, in between these devices, we have some other components. So for example, uh, let me insert another uh, sheet here. 
let's go with this one. So the data on the RAM, it's digital. The computer will deal with data as digital data. Digital means zeros and ones. So you know your uh, light switch, it has I and O or one and zero. In fact, it's zero and one. So when you switch on, it's one, which means there is electricity. When you switch off, it's zero, there is no electricity. So computers, they understand uh, uh, only digits, but we have also some analog, like our voice. Our voice is analog. It, it travels into waves, so I'm, I'm talking now, when I'm talking, this is a wave, goes from my mouth to the microphone. The microphone will take uh, these waves, the analog waves, and convert that to digital ones inside the computer, so the computer can understand that. Then the computer will process that and deal with my voice, transfer the voice over the network to your uh, location, then the computer at your end will convert the digital to analog again and put the output to your headphones so you can hear the analog. You cannot hear the digital, you hear the analog. Uh, what also analog uh, waves we have, like radio, uh, some radios or old radios, it's waves, old phones using waves, um, uh, TV, uh, transmission uh, or broadcast, it's using waves. So uh, the, we, ha we will have some components inside the computer here that will convert the digital to analog and analog to digital, and we call them adapters. So um, we have, for example, uh, it a little bit bigger here so we can add more examples here let's take this one a little bit i told you i'm not that good with drawing right <laughs> i was not lying so <laughs> <laughs> so here we have some uh, adapters and examples for adapters we have display uh, adapter we have, so your network, sorry, your, your monitor connected to the computer and it's connected to a display adapter. So it can display videos, movies. We have also um, sound, sound card, which is adapter. We have network interface card, which is also network adapter and other examples. So these components will be a kind of here in the middle. So it will uh, help in conversion between digital to analog, analog to digital. Okay, if that makes sense, any question here? Um, no, I've only, uh, I guess I my questions will be when we go back to talking about the screens and that. Yes, sure, yeah, no all, problem all at all. So this is the basic design of the computers. And um, just I'll highlight something in, a, in as simple as possible. Uh, when you, in your computer, and when you type, for example, door, the word door, D-O-O-R, so you start typing on your keyboard. So we are on this area now on the left, you are using your keyboard and you start typing. So the computer will understand that by converting the letter D into a number. This number, it's standard number across the, the whole world. 
So if we, if you are hitting D in Australia, it's same thing if you are hitting the D in, in your uh, keyboard in United States, same value. So the computer will convert the letter D into a number, let's say for example, 50. So this number will be converted afterwards to uh, digits, zeros and ones, electricity. And so it will be converted into digits, then it can travel inside the computer uh, components. Then these adapters will convert back and then you can see on your screen the letter D, for example, here starting the, the, the word device starting with D. So it's a journey, but because of the speed of the computer, it, we, we hardly notice the speed. <laughs> it's, it's very, very uh, fast. So um, they call this table ASCII code. It's um, a standard coding system. All computer manufacturers since eight years or 70 years, they agreed on using one code. So all computers across the world, they can talk to each other. Uh, if I'm writing in a different language, it will be also converted to uh, different numbers. And this way the computer can understand different languages. Uh, if I'm writing in Arabic or uh, German or uh, English or any, any, any language, it will be converted to uh, some coding. And this code is a standard, whether this computer is manufactured in China or Japan or United States or wherever. So um, here, these are the different uh, components as we uh, discussed. So I'll show you now some examples of these components. And uh, before we go further, I just need to highlight uh, this area. So uh, we call this one mother board. So this should be motherboard of the computer. So the whole area, it's a motherboard. And um, the processor, we, in some books, they call it CPU, sorry, CPU, which is central, central uh, processing. Unit. Okay. Central processing unit, which is CPU. So we have CPU for the processor or central processing unit. Uh, we have the RAM, random access memory. For short, they call it memory, computer memory. We have the hard drive, which, which is the permanent storage or SSD drive, same function, but better technology, faster technology. We have different adapters. And um, these adapters, uh, like they work like uh, components, for example, display, adapter, sound card, it's an adapter, network interface card, it's an adapter also. So they convert uh, digital to analog and vice versa. Good examples. So here, this is how the RAM looks like. So this is the random access memory. Uh, the RAM you are seeing in front of you, this is the one for the PC, the desktop. Uh, for, the, for the laptop, we have shorter one, smaller one but this is how the RAM looks like in most cases. Of course, there are different uh, colors. It could be green, it could be brown, it could be red, but it doesn't matter. This is how the RAM looks like inside the computer. 
uh, and as we said, the RAM is this part. So here, um, it's a temporary storage. So it will be stored here. The bigger, the better. Uh, just uh, a note here regarding the RAM. Your motherboard, when it's designed, it's designed to have a maximum capacity of the RAM. So let's say my motherboard here for, for this computer, the maximum is 30 gigabyte of RAM. So it can support up to th uh, 32 gigabyte of RAM. I can't put more than that. So this is the maximum. So for your computer, if you need to upgrade the RAM, you need to check on that. You need to check on uh, the maximum capacity you can have on your motherboard. And uh, as we said multiple times, the bigger, the better. So does it go by branding as well? <clears throat> there are different brands for the RAM, okay. yep. uh, like Gigabyte or um, uh, I just don't remember the other brands, but there are different uh, brands. We yep. can have a look on, um, on, we can search that online and we can see different brands. King Gaston, also one of the uh, famous brands, King Gaston, but um, different brands, different prices. Uh, and it is not that expensive nowadays. In older days, it used to be uh, very, very expensive. Um, so uh, while we are discussing the RAM, let me highlight something. So good that you asked this question. It reminded me of maybe uh, something we need to think of, which is byte, then megabyte, sorry, before the megabyte, we can only have kilobyte, megabyte, then we have gigabyte, then we have terabyte, and we have other ones, let me see, uh, exa. Okay, so you remember I said, uh, one letter, for example, letter A, this letter, letter A or B or C or symbol like plus sign or minus, when you input this one from the keyboard, we said it will be stored temporarily in the RAM and it will be converted into a number. When we store the letter or the digit or the symbol, it will be stored in one byte, sorry. So every byte is one letter. So sto this will be uh, storage for a letter digit or a symbol. Okay, so one byte is the storage name for a letter, digit, or symbol. If we have, so in the beginning we started with one byte, we need to store more. So we have 1000, which is kilobyte to be Accurate, it's 1,024 bytes. So kilobyte is 1,024 bytes. So in a kilobyte, I can store up to 1,024 letters or letters and numbers and digits. Then we have megabyte, which is million. So kilo is thousand, like kilogram, it's uh, thousand grams, uh, kilometer, thousand meters. So then we have mega, megabyte, which is 1,024 
kilo five. Then we have gigabyte, and this is one thousand twenty-four megabyte. So giga is like billion. Then we have terabyte. And the terabyte is 1024 gigabyte. There are other uh, storage also uh, names like exa, beta, and other names. So again, the megabyte will be 1000 kilobyte and 1024, and the kilobyte 1024 bytes. So your memory now the memory you have in your computer at the moment most probably it will be four gigabyte uh, or eight gigabyte my computer is 16 gigabyte ram so this is the memory your hard drive maybe it's 256 gigabyte or 512 gigabyte my or more my hard drive is two terabyte. Um, maybe yours is two tera, three tera, I'm not sure. But uh, these are, usually we use that for terabytes for hard drives. Nowadays, hard drives are uh, SSDs. So the permanent storage will be like half tera, which is 512 gigabyte, or one tera or two tera and so forth. So, does that make sense? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Yep. Yes. It's clear now, yeah. Okay, that's good. So, in most cases, when we go uh, to a computer shop and we need to buy a computer or laptop, in most cases, you will find the RAM goes around these numbers. So, it will tell you uh, 4 gigabyte of RAM, 8 gigabyte of RAM, 16 gigabyte of RAM. This is the most... Uh, most cases, uh, the most common uh, size of the RAM. And for hard drives, starting from two, sometimes it's telling you 128 SSD, 128 gigabyte, uh, 256 gigabyte, 512 gigabyte. Uh, also, it can go to uh, one tera, two tera, three tera, something like that nowadays. So this would be different sizes for different storage component we uh, so the ram nowadays as we mentioned multiple times four gig eight gigs 16 gigs okay then we discussed that what about the processor how the processor looks like it looks like um mostly this one at on the right hand so you see it has the word or the abbreviation cpu which is central processing unit Again, this is the computer brain, and the faster, the better. Of course, the faster, the more expensive. And this is um, this photo from uh, the bottom. So this is the bottom of the processor, and this is the top of the processor. This one, the black one here, this black processor, it's an old version of processors, like uh, 20 years ago or something like that. So it, it looks like... Uh, that, but nowadays the processors, by the way, in the beginning processors were looking like that, then they changed to that, then they came back, they go back to this design. So the design is like that from the top, and this is the bottom. Uh, I can make it a little bit bigger so you can see like golden bins. Uh, and smaller again um, so this is how the processor looks like again if we go back to the design the processor is at the top here so this is this is the brain of the computer then we have the body and different arms and legs different uh, inside uh, components good so what about adapters? How the adapters looks like? So we have seen the memory now, we have seen the processor. 
What about adapters? The adapters looks like this one. So this is a display adapter. It's pretty old, not, not one of the new ones. We have uh, a pretty old one. Of course, uh, if we Google uh, display adapters, we can see different uh, types. I can show you also if you are using uh, PowerPoint, so and you need to insert a photo from uh, online, so you can go to insert online picture. Then here uh, you can also conduct a kind of search. Yeah, it goes online and uh, starts searching. It's a little bit slow now because of Zoom is taking the bandwidth. <laughs> So that's why it's a little bit slow. Anyway, I can conduct the search in um, the browser. I'll show you that later. So now the adapter looks like that. This is the display adapter. Display adapter. Uh, let's focus what is the functionality of the display adapter and how it looks like. Let me make it a little bit bigger. So. The main functionality of the display adapter is converting the digital data and information from the RAM and take this uh, data and display it, or the information to be more accurate, and display it on the monitor, display it on the screen in front of you. We go back to the design. So display adapter here on the right hand in this black box here, and this will take the data slash information from the RAM and output that uh, data and information to the monitor. So you can watch movies, TV series, whatever. Okay, so display adapter components, we have memory on the card. So we have memory here. This is, as I said, it's an old design one, but the still is. These are the memory, uh, temporary memory. It's a kind of RAM. Uh, that's why when you need to buy a computer for gaming, for example, you play games a lot, or for graphic design, video editing, you will need a very strong display adapter with minimum of two, two gigabyte, two gigabyte of RAM. So you can play games smoothly, you can edit the videos or process the videos smoothly. So if you are dealing with uh, videos slash games, you need a very strong display adapter. Very strong display adapter means bigger RAM size, better processor, there is a processor here under this fan. So there is another processor, we call it um, video processor, we call it uh, graphic processor, different names, commercial names. After all, it's a, a, a different processor. So other than the main processor we have seen, so the main processor there, we added another one. In some cases we call it GPU, graphic processing unit. So this is the uh, scientific name. The computer science, from the computer science point of view. So this processor will help in processing uh, the amount of data slash information needed to play the game or edit that video or edit that movie and uh, create some output here or deal with some output. So the display adapter will consist of processor, different RAMs, and you see there is a fan, this fan, the functionality of the fan to keep the processor uh, cold so it can function well. Then the connectivity itself here, the way of the connection here, it, it requires, um, it depends on the, again the, what what you are doing with your computer. If you are playing lots of games, advanced games, latest games, or editing videos, so you need a better connectivity. This connectivity will help in the transfer 
rate for the data between the motherboard and the monitor. So it will take the data from the RAM, which is connected to the motherboard. I'll show you that in a minute and display that on the monitor. So these are the uh, three main components, processor, RAM, then connectivity to the motherboard. We have a fourth component, which is how we will connect to the monitor. So you are connecting your monitor to the back of your, of your computer. It will be connected to the display adapter and it will be connected through display port, uh, VGA connection or HDMI. HDMI is the latest. Uh, we are, we've been using it a few years now, of course, but uh, in many cases, you will have VGA or HDMI connectivity. HDMI for better resolution. Uh, of course, better resolution means more data needed to be processed. Uh, better connectivity here better processor there, bigger RAM. So, and more expensive. Display adapters comes in different shapes. Some of them will be built in on the motherboard. Some of them will be, looks like the one you see in front of you, which is um, an adapter. So you can connect that to the motherboard. Any questions here? So what, why have we, well, the world moved away from um, the AVs, the yellow and red and, and yeah, yellow and red. Yellow and red, just, what? <clears throat> the AV uh, cords, were they? Oh, mm, sorry. Yeah, because of the amount of data we needed to transfer. So we have 4K now resolution, 8K resolution. So the amount of data required to, uh, travel in the wire, it's much, much bigger. So we need a better road for the traffic. We need a bigger road with better quality. So we changed the cables itself. We changed the cables to HDMI cables, which can uh, process or transfer this amount of data and it will be wider and faster. Okay, makes sense? Yep, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, so um, this is the display adapter here. This is the one. Then we have also network interface card. It's a, a adapter, but this one will take, uh, it's an input output device and it will take uh, the data and transfer that to the network. Of course, we are connected to a network now that's why you, I can hear you, you can hear me, see me. We are all connected to a network. I have network in my house, you have network at your house and work and all these con uh, networks connected together through internet. So internet is the network of the networks and uh, to be able to connect your computer to a network, you need a network adapter. The one we have in front of us is the wired one. Uh, most desktops, they have wired uh, network card, like the one we see in front of us, but also uh, most laptops have wireless network card, network interface card. It works almost uh, the same way. It will transfer the data from computers to uh, different networks to internet and vice versa. So it's input and the output device. So here the network interface card, the one we see in front of us, it's the big one we can connect it to desktop. But your phone, your smartphone includes a wireless network interface card. That's why your smartphone is connected to internet connected to Wi-Fi at your home or work or McDonald's or something, so which is dangerous, but uh, uh, your phone also includes a network interface card. Um, your tablet also includes network interface card, but wireless one. So you can connect your tablet, laptop, PC, 
on to Wi-Fi. Good, we will discuss more uh, about networking in the coming uh, session. But for the time being, we, uh, we now understand the network interface card. Again, uh, it is similar to other cards. It can, uh, when the technology advances, it can transfer uh, more data. It can transfer faster data, so bigger in size and faster in speed by uh, improving the connectivity, improving the process happening within the card itself. We can have different connectors here. Uh, we can have fiber optics connector, which is uh, very fast. It's uh, almost light. So the speed of light, we transfer the data like the speed of light. Think about uh, aeroplanes or uh, rockets traveling to Mars or something. So we need very fast connectivity. Uh, so or computers process uh, big data in uh, wars, for example, or missiles or whatsoever. So uh, it depends on the amount of data you need to transfer and uh, the faster, the better. And of course, it will be more expensive. So technology advances here and we transfer uh, different data rates. Uh, okay, just I'll go back here to uh, add something here. One byte equals eight bits. So you, you remember the smallest component was byte. So one byte equals eight bits. So here we are talking about storage. If we are discussing speed, so let's say this is go here. This is um, oops. And this one, it's another title. So in the speed, uh, let me make a little bit bigger here. In the speed, we will have, uh, let's say, uh, One hundred mega bit per second. So this is the speed of transfer. Again, this is mega bit. If you need to calculate that um, into so divide divide by eight, so it will give you uh, in bytes. Okay, let me explain this one um, a little bit more. We have storage and we agreed that the storage when I hit A, for example, it will be stored in one byte. Good, is there a smaller than one byte in the storage? Yes, this storage consists of eight bits. So this is the smallest uh, unit we can deal with in the computer science. Good. Do you need to remember that? You don't need to remember that. It's not, you just need to understand that so you can have a better understanding of the computer work. Okay. So eight bits. So one byte will be consisting of eight bits. When we talk about speed, so we will use the B small, which is stands for bits. So the B capital stand, you see B capital stands for byte, but the B small is stands for bits. So the speed of the network card, for example, it's 100 mega 
bits per second. Okay? If you need to know how much that in bytes, you divide by it. Okay. Then if you need to know how much that in, uh, you multiply by kilobyte or divide by kilobyte, it depends on the calculation. Good. So the speed here of the network card, we measure this speed by a megabit per second. Good. What about hard drives? Hard drives, we have different hard drives. This is the old one, the on the right hand top corner. This is the old hard drive. You see it's mechanical here. Uh, we have like metal cylinders here and we use to storage the data here using uh, magnets. So magnetic fields. Then uh, we improved a little bit to SATA, still a uh, little bit technology faster. Then we went into SSD, solid state hard drives. So it looks like that. So these are the SSDs. We are using the SSDs nowadays in our laptops and um, smart devices like smartphone, in your tablet, in your um, so tablets, phones, and laptops. So we use SSDs and also desktops, we use SSDs nowadays. SSD is much better. If you drop the SSD, it will work. No problem at all. It's a digital one. It is not a mechanical one. In old days, this is the mechanical one. If I dropped it, I lost the data. It, most probably it will be corrupted. I can't use it again, most probably. But nowadays we have the SSD. The SSD, it's similar to the USB you have. USB. If you forgot your USB in your uh, uh, pants or, or shorts and you wash that one in the washing machine, the USB will keep working afterwards. So you still have the data there because it's a digital one. Okay, so more reliable, bigger size, faster uh, than the old ones. Okay, any questions that make sense now? Yeah? Yep. Okay, do you need a break, like five minutes break to grab some something for stretch or something? Yeah, could I get a coffee? Yes, okay, five minutes. minutes break, then we will continue. I will awesome. pause, I will pause the uh, recording. Awesome, thank you. For Back five soon. minutes, no problem, five minutes break. Okay, so before the break, we discussed different um, types of hard drives. We said this is the, the one uh, on the right hand, top corner is the old one. Then we got with, uh, we, we came with SATA, then SSDs nowadays. Uh, then how the motherboard looks like. I have two uh, motherboards here, not, not very uh, new ones, but again, you can just Google uh, motherboards and you can see different uh, photos, different pictures for the motherboards. So let me uh, just the one here on the left hand under the fan, this is the processor. Then we have uh, some uh, connectors or slots, these slots for connecting RAMs, the memory. Uh, we have battery here. This is the blue part here. It's like battery. This is keeping uh, date and time and configuration. We have uh, some other uh, slots for connecting adapters. Uh, we have the uh, different connectors at the back of the motherboard. And this is at the back of your computer, like uh, VGA for or display adapter, sound card, different network uh, connectivity and other USB ports. Uh, on the right hand of another motherboard. So we have here the yellow and black on the right hand. These are the memory slots. So we insert the memory there. Uh, we have the processor there, this processor without the fan. So it's connected uh, 
they remove the fan just we can see the processor. Uh, this blue part is a heat sink, and we can know below this one is the display adapter built in on the motherboard display adapter, and it needs a heat sink to keep it uh, cold as much as possible. Um, computers uh, needs um, to be in a, in a cold weather, 16 degrees when we have data centers, but um, if it goes like 38, 40, or 35, this is too bad for the computer. So if inside your house or work, it's that heat, we need a kind of uh, cooling system, air conditioned. Uh, these uh, slots here for different components, different adapters, display adapters or sound cars, network uh, interface cars and other ones. Here, these are the connectors for keyboard, mouse, printers um, and other types of connectors, network cards, and so forth. So this is how the motherboard looks like. Again, if we go back to the design, you remember the design here. So you notice the motherboard includes different components. Um, any questions here with the motherboard? Any question, anything you need to clarify or ask about? All good? Um, mm -hmm. Just is the motherboard the same as in motherboard on a TV, beyond a TV? Um, same name, but different components. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, there, there, are, there is a motherboard in your car. There is a motherboard in your washing machine, dishwasher, uh, TV, yes, as you mentioned, uh, in your tablet, in your phone, uh, laptops, desktops, motherboards, but different components, of course, based on functionality. Okay, your PlayStation, your Xbox also includes motherboard with processors, RAMs, and hard drives. Um, okay, now uh, we will discuss uh, some more items here. So at your home, you have a device and this device connecting you to internet. So what is the name of the device you have at home? Not the brand, the name, what do you call it? Modem. You call it modem, okay. Any other names? Router, you yeah, call it router? router? Yeah. Uh, do you call it switch? Sensor, no? No. No, no okay. sensor. <laughs> it will be uh, switch, router, in some cases. Monitor. Uh, no. no, modem. Monitor is the display screen. So no, you know, like you know, all those old computers, if the uh, blah blah, the old computers where you've got the screen monitor, and then there's a big black box next to it. Is that a monitor as well? Is that a... no? The black box is the um, case, computer case. Oh, all yes. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, monitor is the is the, is the screen display screen. Okay. So um, the device you have at home, the commercial name, we, sometimes we call it router, sometimes we call it switch, sometimes we call it modem, it depends. Uh, the device I have at my home at the moment, it's a switch and router at the same time. Uh, it's wired and wireless at the same time. It is not a modem anymore. In old days, we used to use modems when we needed to connect telephone cables to our computers. So I needed to connect telephone cable to the computer so I can connect it to internet. So in old days, we and this is still in some areas of Australia, they are using ADSL. So they are using telephone cables. If you are using the new technology implemented recently in Australia in many areas like NBN, this is the fiber optics. So you don't, you don't need a modem. The modem, uh, its uh, main functionality is connecting 
uh, in simple words connecting and simple examples also connecting the telephone cable and the telephone network to your computer so you can reach internet in nowadays we are using fiber optics and we don't use modems anymore uh, we use different units or what's fiber devices. optics fiber optics uh, it's uh, a cable made from glass oh okay yeah yeah so it's very very uh reliable and very fast so the data transfer there at the speed of light so can you imagine the uh, the speed is really uh, good so uh, you can watch movies online without the need for download the movie first then watch it so you can just watch live streaming uh, so the device you have at home nowadays it's called the commercial name it's a router but the uh, from a computer science perspective the proper name it's a switch and router at the same time and in most cases it will look like the one we have in front of us or different uh, types uh, different looks different brands but the main functionality of this device at home is connecting your home network together so you can have a small network at home uh, so your computers are connected together you can share one printer you can print if you, from your phone to your printer if you want to you can do many things and also all devices at your house connected to internet through the router so what is the difference between the switch and router very very important difference we need a switch to build a network internal network so for internal network we need a switch so at your home or at your workplace you definitely you have a switch why i'm saying definitely because you are connected to internet and uh, you are connected to other devices i can communicate with you now so definitely you have a switch or 100 switches definitely also you have a router router connecting the network to a different network so the router is a device between two different networks so if i need to connect my home network to internet i will use a router do we need the switch and router yes of course because the switch will build the local network and the router will connect me with the external network like internet or other networks good what if i need to connect my network in the uh, building a to a network in building b if they are different in configuration we will need a router between them in addition to switches of course if they are the same configuration we don't need router we will use switch so the switch will create network the router will connect different networks they are different in configuration in settings in functionality different details we we don't need to go into depth at the moment so again the device you have at home it's a home uh, device or uh, they call it soho small office home office that's why we are using one device includes router and switch and maybe other uh, devices also included there but in reality and, and i mean enterprise size we have switches and routers they are separate devices with separate functionality does that make sense yeah yeah any questions any questions and this is sorry this is all connected by nbn yeah so this if you have, your, if, yes yeah. if you have nbn yeah. so all connected through nbn then yeah. 
our our MBN in Australia or our internet across Australia, it's connected, for example, to Singapore through uh, cable. There is a cable in in the ocean, so they are using uh, submarines to have these cables between uh, continents. So there are cables in the ocean under the sea by divers and submarines, the, the, the cables there connecting Australia to Singapore, then from Singapore, maybe to China or United States or whatsoever. So the, the all co continents, they are connected together through cables inside the ocean. Wow, thank you. Did not, wow, we good use to know. Also, yep. we, we use also satellites. So we have connections across the cables and we have wireless connections through satellite. So if you are in the, in the, in the aeroplane, you are fly, flying from maybe Sydney to Melbourne or from Townsville to Sydney, maybe they have Wi-Fi in the plane. It's connected through wireless or satellite somehow. So we have satellite connections and we have uh, uh, like sea cables. Good. What Thank else? You. Yeah, no problem. What else we need to uh, think of and see? Servers. So, for example, you are sending every day, you are sending emails, receiving emails from your Gmail, from your Hotmail, from your work email. These emails, well, will be stored, managed, created, sent, deleted, updated, backed up using servers, email server. The email server is a software that is stored on a hardware. So this is the server looks like. So in front of us, we have three servers. Server, in simple words, it's a strong computer. It looks different, but it is a computer after all. So the computer you have in your phone, it's different than the computer you have in your workplace, but after all, it's a computer. So what we see in front of us here, it's three examples or three servers. Server is a strong computer. We need strong computer in our organizations, enterprise size. Why? Uh, because we need to have email server. We need to have username and password authentication for uh, different employees. We, uh, we need to have some file sharing. You share files through the server. You have some database. You have some applications like payroll application uh, or uh, financial applications. You have email. You have um, antivirus, centralized antivirus. You have different uh, components of the network. So we use what's so called servers to control the network. And this is how the server looks like. In the session related to networks, we will discuss more about that. Um, then the components we were discussing till now, these are the hardware components, tangible components. We can see them. So these are the uh, different devices and different uh, peripherals. So starting from memory, hard drives, other adapters and so forth. So these are all hardware components. You can touch them. It's like the body of the computer, but we need also to have the soul of the computer. So the soul of the computer is the software. So we have hardware components connected together through wires or wireless, but we need a kind of software. This software is the soul of the computer telling the processor what the processor needs to do. We give the processor instructions and the processor will follow our instructions. So you open a word or you open your email in the morning and this is a software, it's an application. 
once you open this one, you are calling this software to run on your phone, on your laptop, and on your tablet. It's a software. Uh, nowadays, we call it app, which is application. So you have a mobile app, you have application on your desktop. So in the morning, you switch on your computer or your phone. Then there is operating system in the beginning. For example, the computer in front of you could be Windows. So you have Windows operating system. It's a software stored on the hard drive. You, you, maybe you have Mac, so it's iOS, Mac iOS, or Mac operating system. Good. Uh, you, you switch on your phone, uh, and your phone may be Android, so the Android is the operating system for the phone, or you have iPhone, so again, it's iOS for iPhone from Apple. So... Nowadays, we are using either Android or uh, Apple, iPhone. So this is the operating system. Then after the operating system, we will have some apps like you switch on your computer, Windows starts first or Mac, then you will click on or touch Outlook to open the email or Gmail to check your Gmail or uh, Excel, PowerPoint, Zoom, um, anything. So these are applications comes after the operating system. So the, the generic name for applications is software. Good. Let me just go to the slide about software. So software is a generic word. We, we don't say softwares at all. This is wrong, totally wrong. It's software uh, for ruler also. So starting with operating system. So operating system, for example, we have Windows. Uh, we have uh, Linux. We have iOS um, and other operating systems. Then we have Office components uh, or Office, Microsoft Office. If we are talking like Word, Excel, uh, PowerPoint, uh, Outlook, um, uh, other things also. So we can have other things. We have different utilities. So like um, Acrobat Reader, for PDF, you open the PDF files. Uh, you have, for example, uh, WinZip or WinRAR for zipping uh, or archive some files. Um, you have scanner application, you have printing application, so other things. Here, antivirus like uh, McAfee, uh, Norton, uh, AVG, many antiviruses. Uh, semantic, uh, AVG, uh, uh, yes, this is the correct one. Browsers, internet browser, give, give me some examples. Browsers. I was trying to say it's Explorer. Yes, so Google Chrome, Prime. Internet Explorer, or Edge. Edge, is that yeah. Edge, is Edge Microsoft? No. Yes. Microsoft. Mozilla, yes. The Fire, Firefox. Firefox, yeah, this is the Mozilla thing. Um, we have Opera. There is something called Tor. So these are all uh, applications, uh, software. What else? Can you give me other examples of applications you are using? So is application like um, software? Software. Yeah. 
Zoom. Ah, uh, okay, Zoom. Microsoft Teams. Teams. Yes. Yep, Teams. Okay. Um, telehealth. Oh, no, that's different. Telehealth. Hi, meetings. Category. Okay. Skype. Any, yes. Good. Skype. Yeah. Any other uh, categories? Games. Do you play games? Any games? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Do you play FIFA? Uh, what else? Basketball. Okay. And Any other game? Um. Is it an online one? Uh, Anything. Oh. <laughs> PUBG. <laughs> PUBG, I haven't done ages. Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario. So, okay. So, these are all applications. You use also applications like work application for submitting your annual leave uh, or salary. You check for your salary um, and ever bank transactions it will be through your bank app on your phone from ANZ Commonwealth whatsoever um, and other things so there are many many applications and um, yeah here examples for Windows Linux operating system so um, uh, operating systems we will have desktop we will have tablet Operating systems, we will have, uh, we will have um, network, network operating systems. Uh, other devices, other devices like your washing machine, there is operating system there, your phone, there are operating systems there. Uh, so, uh, so we have Windows Server client, we have Linux Server client, we have Mac OS, we have uh, iOS, we have Android, as we mentioned before. So these are the different operating systems. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So for the old Nokia phones, mm -hmm. what was that? Were they? I don't remember the name of the operating system. It's Nokia operating system, but I don't oh. remember the, the name. Yeah. Uh, it's different operating system. Yeah. Okay. Okay, makes sense. So um, uh, again, I'll go back to the design and um, summarize what we were uh, discussing starting from the beginning. So we said that these are the tangible components, the hardware components. We have input devices, for example, we have the keyboard, mouse, scanner, microphones or mics. These devices will input some data into temporary storage and the temporary storage is called uh, memory or random access memory, uh, then the memory will take the data, send it to the processor. The processor will process the data, so the data will be converted from raw, uh, unuseful uh, data to useful information. And in exchange with the RAM and the processor, we will have data and the information. We will store that in a permanent storage and we will display that on the uh, monitor in output devices or we print or we listen to uh, music or movies so we can watch the movie listen to the movie um, we will need some adapters in between like display adapter sound card network interface card to connect the computer to network uh, and everything stored on a motherboard so these are the tangible components we needed uh, something tell the uh, processor to follow the instructions and this is the application so or the software we have the software and we have different categories for the software starting from the operating system we need operating system windows mac uh, android 
uh, iOS from Apple, whatever the operating system. Your washing machine includes operating system. Your Xbox, there is operating system there. Your uh, tablet, your phone, your computer, your network, your server will include operating system. We need an operating system as the basic component of the software. Then we add different applications. So we have different applications like uh, PowerPoint, Outlook, Zoom, uh, your bank application, your antivirus, your game, the game you're playing, and so forth. So the computer consists of hardware and software. If some parts of the hardware not working, so we need to maintain that if it's fixable or uh, maintainable, so we can fix that, otherwise we will re replace it. When we replace that, we need to make sure it's compatible with the other components for the hardware. For software, we can reset the software, we can uninstall some software, install it again, or operating system, we can erase everything, then reinstall, set up the application, or uh, reinstall everything again, format the hard drive, so the hard drive will be able to delete, everything will be deleted, then we format to prepare for the operating system to be installed. Uh, Nowadays, installation is very, very easy. Just you download something, you run it, and double click to uh, run it. Make sure you have a licensed and uh, clean applications, and you follow policies from the workplace at home. Also, avoid uh, any malicious software by downloading from. Uh, trustworthy websites like Microsoft or uh, Oracle or Cisco or something. It depends on the website you are downloading from. So um, these are the uh, main components of the computers we discussed today. Um, I hope it was an informative session and you learned something new today your uh, input and discussions also were really beneficial even during the break we had some uh, discussions um, so now uh, it's time for you to ask me questions and feel free to unmute your mic and ask me i'm still uh, recording that maybe you have some beneficial questions that we can use with other participants, uh, then maybe a few minutes I'll, um, I can answer your questions, then we can stop the recording and you can answer any other questions, you don't want them to be recorded, feel free to do so related to uh, computers or networking, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. So um, uh, again, I'll go back to the first slide so you can have my email and you can email me uh, also any questions you remember uh, after this session you need to ask me something please email me i'll be more than happy to reply to your email as soon as possible okay oh, i just want to ask yes. sorry Seth. yes sure um just about the assignment mm -hmm. um when do we it's when is this true actually uh, have you got the email from uh, Melanie about the, uh, the you? I think no. it's mentioned there, but I'll I okay offline. I can check that and uh, check the email and get back to you uh, yep. after we stop the recording. Okay. Yep. Uh, any other questions related to what I have explained today? No questions from me. Yeah, okay. no have, questions. have you learned something new today? Yeah, more of the megabytes and kilobytes, <laughs> okay. like. Okay. And the and is it the computer design, like how input and output? Okay. That's so good. is it input and output similar to like negative and positive, but not exact, but just to <laughs> interpret it that way. Okay. Okay. Anything else you learned? 
Clara, did you learn anything? Can you hear me? Yes, Clara. Now oh, I sorry. Yeah. Um, I, well, I think like all of this information is relatively new to me. Like I just basically just thought. Um, your, that mic, it, your mic muted a little bit, so I, we lost you. <laughs> we lost you again, Clara. Okay. I'll, uh... Is that better? Yes, no? now we can hear yeah. you. Yeah. Sorry, it's, it's my reception on the um, my computer. It's um, okay. so I, um, I thought everything was really like really interesting. Like I just thought I didn't really think how complex like a computer can be. So this is relatively new information, and yeah, it was very interesting um, for it to be broken down to how you explained it. So yeah, this is yeah very insightful. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really happy that uh, it was informative and we learned something new today. Please, again, feel free to email me if you have some questions. I will stop the recording now. Then if you have other questions, you can ask offline.